Hello and welcome to my YouTube series Increase Your Research Impact. In this episode I'll show you how to really make the most of your Google Scholar profile. Let's move on to step 5. If you do need to convince your colleagues who don't have a Google Scholar profile yet, um, just remember them how quick and easy it is. Some people seem to think that it takes hours to do this. Um, I have given presentations on this where people were sitting in the audience and before I finished the slides they'd already set up their profile. So it is really quick. However, you need to be careful because if you have a common name as I said and you have your profile additions on Odomatic, they might add papers that are actually not your own papers. Um, so then put your profile on um, manual which means that whenever Google thinks there is a paper that's yours they will send you an email and you can add it. And it doesn't mean you have to type it in yourself it's just they send you an email you click on the link and you say yes that's my paper please add it. I think that's a sensible way to do it even if your name is not unique because it's an automatic process, something might go wrong and you don't want to end up with papers on your profile that are not yours, it doesn't look good. Um, especially not if it's a paper that is enormously highly cited and moves your citation record from a thousand to fifteen thousand and people are thinking um, this person is trying to cheat, they're trying to inflate their citation record. So make sure that it's clean and set your publication uh, updates uh, to manual. So let's have a look at Google Scholar and see whether there's any options that you are not yet familiar with. Have all of you tried to actually merge papers when uh, you have multiple versions of the same paper or have you not come across that? No. Um, you sometimes get multiple versions of the same paper appearing in Google Scholar because academics have kind of made a slight mistake in the reference. They might have said like 2016 for a paper whereas it was published in 2017 or they might have made a, a typo um, in your name and because Google Scholar draws everything from the web they might find some what we call stray citations. You can actually merge these into the master record and in particular uh, for non-traditional publications such as books or in my case software because my most cited publication is actually a piece of software publish or perish. Now there isn't a standard way to refer to software so lots of people do this in lots of different ways. You can see the many ways in which people have referred to this. Well, if I wouldn't aggregate these on the one item, most of my Google Scholar profile would be all sorts of ways people have referred to publish or perish. You don't want that. So if that's happening to you, have a look. You can actually just merge them by clicking the two versions and then say merge. I'm not going to do this because it will mess up my profile, but you can do that. Um, what you can also do is set up alerts if you want to see when you get new citations or if you want to see when other people are adding articles to their Google Scholar profile you can set up uh, alerts uh, for that uh, we won't go and do that now because it will take us too much time but next time you log into your Google Scholar profile have a look at that because I find it quite useful um, if you're following a particular academic uh, who's doing a lot of work in your area and you want to know if they've published uh, a new article. You can do that on ResearchGate as well but sometimes one is a bit quicker, sometimes a person has a Google Scholar profile but not a ResearchGate profile or the other way around. Um, so that's also a useful uh, way to uh, use Google Scholar um, and then you can use it a little bit like um, a network tool by looking at the people that um, the person you're looking at has co-authored with. 
So if you're thinking, oh, I like the work of that individual, look at what their co-authors have done, you can move to the co-authors by just clicking on the link. Um, so in that sense, it has kind of limited social media features in that there's a, a networking element. You don't have the uh, asking for publications, the commenting on your publications. It's basically a list of your publications and the citations. But because it's the most comprehensive list of publications that is available, because books and conference papers and pieces of software, they will not be included in the Web of Science or in Scopus, but they will be included in Google Scholar. So that's why it's important as an academic in the social sciences where we have lots of non-journal publications or journal publications that are not in journals that are included in the Web of Science or Scopus, it's important to have your Google Scholar profile complete. Want to know more about all the things you can do with your Google Scholar profile? Have a look at this blog post. Just Google it and you'll find it easily. In the next episode, I will discuss how what has become a really old-fashioned way of communicating, using email, can be a good way to increase the impact of your paper. Hope you will join me.